Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Campus Consortium EdTech Think Tank webinar, Legacy IT is not suitable, transformational IT is the future. If you have any questions now or during today's presentation, please type them into the chat box or question pane in the Zoom control panel. Without further ado, I would like to pass the platform to Dr. Carl Horvath, President at Campus Consortium. Thank you, David, and welcome to all our attendees and welcome to our distinguished panel of presenters today. Thank you for joining our monthly webinar. Uh, this month's EdTech Think Tank webinar is about how higher education and K-12 can change the way they manage IT to make it more sustainable and actually grow and advance their institution. Before we get started, I would like to call out a few of our attendees here. I want to give you an idea of who's attending today's webinar. We have attendees from across the country, west to east, north to south. Uh, there are many types of institutions, community college, four-year, research universities, uh, small privates, medium privates, uh, many different attendees and many different roles, leadership roles. Uh, we have influencers who are not just technology uh, attendees, but uh, in all departments. And that is because IT affects the entire institution. Uh, I see uh, there's uh, University of Mont Vermont, Lourdes University, uh, Auburn, Penn State, uh, Temple University, my alma mater. Uh, and we also have uh, uh, Levity Stout Community College, and uh, we appreciate you uh, stopping by. Seton Hill, SUNY Westchester, uh, University of Connecticut, uh, and Shepherd University, University of Oregon, uh, and many, many others uh, from almost every state. So great turnout. Thank you for attending today. Uh, going to move on to uh, tell you a little bit about Campus Consortium. It's a technology, education technology association, and our mission is to help with the affordability and access of technology for education and to advance education. So uh, we offer a lot of programs and services for our members, and we're uh, happy to speak with non-members and help you as well. So please reach out to info at Campus Consortium or visit our website, campusconsortium.org anytime. Uh, our speakers today are from a variety of different leading managed services companies that are active in education sector. Matt Loki, Executive Vice President for Apogee, Liz Murphy, CEO and Chief Evangelist for CampusWorks, Patrick McAvoy, Executive Vice President for Dynamic Campus, and Barbara Rodriguez, Vice President for Oculus IT. So thank you panelists for attending today. Looking forward to the discussion. And we're gonna cover legacy IT versus transformational, IT and how we can help it align with your institutional strategy for growth. Uh, first poll question, I uh, would like to ask the audience, you have about 30 seconds to answer these poll questions. These poll questions really provide a lot of insight to us. Uh, it helps frame what the panelists will talk about, and uh, we will generate an ed tech report that we will send to all of you as a second iteration of this webinar. It's a more of an in-depth analysis and discussion of legacy IT and managed services, and we'll be sure to send that to you. So please answer this poll question. Does your institution have the IT support it needs for your critical business objectives? That's teaching, learning, student services, your day-to-day -day operations. And these answers are yes, somewhat, or no, uh, essentially. And if you could just answer this question over the next 30 seconds, uh, appreciate that. And just uh, to give you a quick overview of uh, what we're talking about here in education, uh, everybody's heard about the budget uh, constraints, lack of training, the increasing IT security concerns, the move to the cloud, uh, and resistance to change over the years. But 
uh, the students are certainly changing. Our society is changing, how we operate day to day, the dependency on technology uh, has certainly increased. So there are many uh, opportunities uh, for education to align themselves uh, with the customs, the rites, and the rituals of how students behave today. A uh, quick update on the feedback from our audience. Thank you for answering. Does your institution have the IT support it needs? Uh, about 39% said, yes, we, we're, we're pretty good with IT. Uh, we have about 55% uh, that say somewhat, and 33 that say no, not at all. So certainly more uh, than uh, more than those that do. Uh, so uh, that's good because we have information for all schools uh, that will help you whether you're prepared or not. Um, higher ed legacy IT model is the model where uh, institutions hire their own IT staff, they manage their own systems, uh, they control their own programs. Uh, the problem is, is that it's more difficult today to find the resources you need. It's more difficult today to find the expertise that will work for your institution and not leave in six months once they get some experience for a higher paying job. Uh, the threats for IT security are dramatically increasing. The service expectations of the customers, in this case, students, faculty, and staff, are vastly different than they were 5, 10, 15 years ago. And so technology has a lot to do with uh, making sure your institution is prepared to serve all these areas. Um, so the rationale would be that to change the model, and it is possible, and it is doable. It's also affordable, uh, but you have to get with the right partner who can help and guide you through this process. Uh, the benefits on the other end are that you will be able to really prepare your institution to not worry about technology, but find technology as an enabler, a strategic enabler to advance your institution. So what are managed services providers? Well, yes, uh, the word outsourcing comes up, uh, but they are more like partners in the education space. And these are uh, companies that will work closely with you and they understand education because education is their only customers, but uh, they will help trans, uh, uh, transform your IT from the hard and difficult to manage to the enabler and empowering IT department that you really do need. So that could mean full outsourcing, or it could mean partial, or it could mean augmentation. It depends on what is comfortable for your institution. Types of managed services, here are the common ones that are cloud services, help desk IT. And then a lot of the drivers in this, these drivers are for all industries, not just education, but it certainly affects education, customer experience, expectations, uh, cybersecurity, procurement, uh, cloud computing, many other uh, driving factors that are affecting everyone. So a managed service provider is a vendor who augments or replaces IT staff uh, to cost effectively fill gaps. And there's many institutions that have gaps in IT now as the dependency uh, dramatically increases. And uh, as I said before, vendors in the managed services space really need to be partners. They're not just buying a piece of software or a technology service. Uh, managed services providers are partners because they're woven into the infrastructure, the fabric of your institution in every aspect. So they support everybody because everybody uses technology and depends on it. So it's important to find the right partner. And ultimately, it's going to help advance your institution. Campus consortiums models kind of break it down into these areas that uh, might help uh, gain perspective for you, which is uh, we see some of the common models are full managed services of uh, what services are available. That means somebody comes into your institution, takes over all of IT. Then there's select managed services where they come in and take over components of it. Uh, and then augment is where help is needed. That's where they can apply the assistance and support. 
So these are, uh, we also break up uh, IT into commodity, information governance, and strategy. Commodity is network systems, help desk, information governance is your reporting and intelligence used to make decisions. And strategy and leadership, of course, is your CIO or your top leadership that works with your senior leadership. So all of this is influenced by budget, culture, and the ability to be flexible for institutions. Next poll question, is your institution prepared to quickly respond and restore uh, business operations in the event of a security threat system outage or data compromise? Again, uh, the simple answers are yes, somewhat, or no. Uh, and that would be very helpful to understand uh, because a lot of your resilien resiliency for your institution centers around your ability to access, maintain uh, your data and make sure it's not just protected, but that it's available for everyone to do their jobs. 30 seconds to answer this one. Thank you for uh, answering that one. And what I'd like to do is start out by introducing our first guest speaker, uh, who is Liz Murphy, the CEO and Chief Evangelist of CampusWorks. Uh, she leads more than 400 seasoned professionals who understand the business of higher education and its impact on student experience, and they're committed to delivering effective solutions that drive meaningful change and achieve sustainable results. Uh, Liz is here to contribute to the thought leadership around managed services, but before I hand it over to you, Liz, here's the results of our last poll question. Is your institution prepared? About half the respondents say, yes, uh, we, we have a disaster recovery plan and cloud backup of data. That is very good. And then 37 and 9% say, eh, well, somewhat or no, not really. We need to get to it. So great overview of where institutions are today. Liz, I would like to hand the platform over to you. Thanks so much, Carl. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're well. Uh, let me begin by saying, uh, if you want to go to the next slide, Carl, that um, this isn't your parents' managed services environment, right? So um, you might have an idea of what outsourcing means, and I can speak for um, all my peers on this, uh, on this Zoom screen that um, there are many different ways to go about really helping you to create transformation through the use of technology. Um, in higher education. I think sometimes we have blinders on uh, about that, and we think the only way to do it is to uh, terminate all of our existing staff and start fresh. And I will tell you, knowing uh, the folks on this call and their companies and the fine way they do business, um, none of us are really designed that way. So keep your antenna up and listen for what's going to work for you, because um, really, right now, we're very fortunate that we are able to really tailor to the profile and the culture of the institution, uh, to what really makes sense for you. But I think in order for you to know that, you have to take a page from Stephen Covey and begin with the end in mind. What is it you really want out of this change in how you're performing uh, to how your institution is transforming and how you're going to use technology to do that. From our perspective at CampusWorks, we really cover all three models that Carl just presented, full and select and augmented. And we really reach in after we understand what it is we, you want to accomplish. But, but the outcomes are very similar. The first is to make sure that we expand in the area of strategic initiatives. One of the single biggest complaints I get from presidents, and I host a series of, of networking groups with presidents in higher education is, you know, Liz, I don't know about dark fiber. All I can tell you is the thing I wanna get done never gets done. So why is that? Help me understand why that doesn't happen. And why am I plowing more and more money into IT, but I don't seem to get the thing that I really want, which is a better employee experience, more efficient employee experience, or a better student experience. Why is that? Well, many of us on this call um, are in the weeds of IT, and you know how fast you're pedaling just to keep up with the basics, right? One of the reasons that you know modern managed services is popular is because it allows you to create at a lower cost the basic functions 
do in a satisfying, stable, consistent way, and then leave room without, without an, a great additional expense for innovation. And that's really typically the number one outcome, you know? So my perspective, because I spend most of my time with higher education presidents uh, talking about their problems and issues and frustrations, that's the number one issue. Number two is the issue is increasing service levels. And this is very tightly coupled with the idea that we can't find the talent in Storm Lake, Iowa to do what we need to do. And that's creating real pressures for us. The other pressure we have in the academy is that we're not really great at moving people along when their skill sets don't align anymore with what we need to do. And we're, we also are don't actually invest in bringing them up to another level. We also aren't really comfortable with part time people. We tend to hire whole people and it's really difficult to find a whole person who can do all the niche things that you need to have done. So when you see this little word, this you know, acronym COE, that stands for Centers of Excellence, which is an opportunity to really reach into a place of expertise, where whether it's the, the ERP or networking or uh, security, and pull out all the discrete talents and skills you need for that moment in time, while you're running the rest of the business. So you all know when you when it comes time for security audit, it's all hands on deck. Everybody, even if they can't spell security, is trying to help to make sure you get a good report. Well, do you really have the talent on board to be able to make that happen? And after COVID, I think we're struggling more and more about that. So this approach gives you access to way more talent as well as at least in the campus works model, we actually work with your existing team to bring up their skill level and give them an opportunity through affinity groups and formal training to actually deepen their skills so they can stay connected to your institution, even if they become a campus works employee, which is one of the options. IT experience goes without saying everybody wants you up 24 seven and you better be in that classroom when something breaks and you better be on the phone with the student who's trying to submit their final essay at two o'clock in the morning right so how do you do that you have to do it with a broad swath of personnel in multiple time zones to be able to help make that happen we're really trying to drive innovation throughout the academy so technology shouldn't be the kinkos as i say of higher education and too often it's relegated to that where departments come to it and say oh i heard i could just buy this thing it's in the cloud and i could just implement it myself and um it's gonna it's gonna make all the recruiting so much easier and then all of a sudden they're showing up with the software they've paid for with their um credit card and they're saying, hey, we found out we really can't do that. And they haven't really thought about all the underlying pieces that have to go into it, right? And the innovation hasn't been thought of holistically, like institutionally, what are we trying to accomplish? What is the strategic plan of the institution? And how can technology raise that up? Instead, you've got sometimes departments going to IT with requests and designs instead of saying, Tell me what your business problem is. This makes space for you to be able to have those deep conversations. It also, we found in our clients, helps to train the departments how to be power users in the use of technology, not just in the use of the ERP, but really have technology top of mind without having to understand exactly how it works, just being able to leverage it to the best result. Continuous improvement, constantly driving to do things better as we move things along. Next slide, Carl. This is an overview. You'll see the slides, Carl, and the team will send them out to you. But really, if you can see color, the dark blue slides are really the centers of excellence. Those are the places where you can reach in very strongly and effectively and get really strong support in niche areas, right? Which you can't hire, you can't hire all the, you can't hire one of all of these. It's just not feasible to do that. And you may not have access to that talent in your neighborhood either, right? So centers of excellence coupled with the lighter colored boxes that you see here, in our model at CampusWorks, it's a hybrid solution. So we still have on-site staff 
and we have staff supporting you through the Centers of Excellence, um, and all of our team members are North American based. If you go to the next slide, Carl, I would say the biggest distinction for us at CampusWorks is that we take a holistic approach to looking at managed services. And we really look at driving the student experience because isn't that what it's all about? So how will technology do that? What's the best model for your culture? All of us can keep the lights on. That's absolutely true. That's, that's our bread and butter. Now the question is, what do you need at your institution that's going to make a sea change, that's really going to get help you get more than your fair share of students and have them retained through graduation? All right, Liz, that, that, that is spot on. Uh, strategy, leadership, uh, and it's, uh, you, you know, I, I was thinking as you were saying that IT is not a utility right? It's, it's, it's absolutely, uh, you know, I, I have this president workshop uh, and it's uh, three one hour days in a week. Uh, uh, presidents sign up and I talk through them. Uh, you know, presidents not trained. They're trained in finances. They were trained in academics and student services, student life, but not so much in the t uh, value of technology because maybe it wasn't really around back then. Today, no brainer. You have to be uh, engage and keep technology close, like you keep money close, like you keep the quality of ac academics close. So thank you for that. Uh, I appreciate your input on that. Moving right along, we have another poll question. Attendees, is your institution's community, students, faculty, and staff, and leadership satisfied with the level of support provided by your current IT department? Again, yes, somewhat, or no. Please take the next 30 seconds to answer. And uh, we do have an attendee who... Uh, did uh, post uh, something in our Q&A, I hope, uh, or our chat, and I hope everybody can see that in the audience. Uh, it's a American Association of Universities professor, uh, and uh, the article's about austerity, labor exploitation, and the academic stretch out. So interesting read. I think uh, it contributes to the discussion of what we're having. i uh, like to introduce our next speaker, Patrick uh, McAvoy, Executive Vice President at Dynamic Campus, and Patrick is responsible for ensuring uh, Dynamic Campus remains the premier services and support partner for higher ed institutions, and yes, it is a fast-changing environment, uh, and he attends to the rapidly changing needs of institutions by providing consulting, tactical support, and other critical needs of institution leadership today. Uh, here's the results of our last poll question. Looks like uh, most folks, 62% are in the middle in this question uh, about the satisfaction of the university community with IT. Uh, somewhat, right? 62%. 32% uh, report, yeah, yeah, we're pretty good with IT, uh, but looks like 5% are just having a difficult time. So again, there's room for imp improvement for uh, some institutions out there, and even for the ones that are successful uh, at uh, you know deploying and managing IT, uh, there are, is room for augmentation or enhancement to what students, faculty, and staff expect. Patrick, I'd like to hand it over to you, please. Appreciate that, Carl. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for being with us today. Um, I wanted to echo something you just mentioned, which is, uh, as you said, and uh, you can invest in the next slide if you like, in terms of IT being an, an expense rather than an investment, we saw a lot of this, you know, five and six years ago, we were talk to, talking to a lot of higher education leaders about the importance of IT uh, to their institution, to the future of their institution, to the, the, the vitality of the institution. And sometimes that, that message landed and other times it got lost amongst a, a, a large menu of competing priorities that hit the higher education leader's desk on a daily basis. Um, you know, obviously, what we've seen since the pandemic is that that has really proven itself out, that, that IT is really critical to the institution. It's critical to the future of the institution. But what's interesting is, you know, the American Council on Education, every, every three, four, five years, does a presidential survey, which many of you may be familiar with. And it's interesting that one of the questions that they ask of all these leaders, uh, presidents across a wide spectrum of, of institutions, is what are the elements of the presidency that they are that they feel most comfortable and most qualified to manage and to address 
and what do they feel that they are the least qualified to address as soon once they assume their first presidency? Number one on the list for the last three of these uh, surveys, the last I guess which would cover almost a decade, is IT. So it's very hard for many leaders if they don't know the questions to ask in order to know whether their IT is high functioning or not. They tend to just sort of back off and and, and hope that things are going well, or maybe they're listening to other constituents. Um, so it, from our perspective, you know there are no IT problems in higher education. There are only business problems. And so that's why we we came up with what we consider to be our, our pathway to institutional success. Uh, initially, you know, way back when, we would do kinds of surveys and have them, we'd go in and do assessments, and we'd be asking technical questions of non-technical leaders. And we didn't really get very far, and they didn't get the answers they were looking for. Um, so we said, let's let's frame this not in terms, just like when you go to the doctor, you don't come necessarily with a diagnosis in mind to be able to talk in medical terminology. You just know what your symptoms are. Um, so when we look at, at this pathway to institutional success, we've essentially aggregated a lot of the symptoms and the pain points or the outcomes that might be felt from institutions that are in that triage phase where they're very reactive. The majority of what they're doing is putting out fires. They're not able to get, uh, not able to deliver a sustained competitive advantage for, from their IT function. So if you're looking at that triage section there and that feels like you, then yes, you may have an underperforming IT function, even based on whatever you said in the last poll question, uh, may want to reevaluate that one. Um, if you're in that green area and you're starting to say, okay, now you know, things are, are pretty stable. Uh, we're not, I don't have torches and pitchforks and the kids coming at me because the Wi-Fi is out in, in various segments of the, the dorms and the residence halls and sections of campus. But I'm also as a leader, not getting that alignment. I'm not seeing IT as an accelerator or a driver of innovation here at my institution. It's not helping me get to where I know with this institution institution needs to go. Um, so that's that's sort of that stabilized phase. Things are going well, but they're not necessarily, again, a sustainable advantage for you. And then you start to get into that optimized phase. Um, and this is obviously where you have a very high performing IT function. Those of you who feel very strongly about your IT functions, hopefully you're seeing nodding your head at some of these, these, uh, these symptoms, these outcomes in the blue section there. Uh, some of our partners and, and customers refer to this affectionately as, as Candyland. Um, so it is it is designed to be easily consumable, but it's definitely not a game. Uh, the good news here is it's not shoots and ladders. Uh, if you're making investments in IT and you engage with a managed services partner to help you migrate up this path, there are no gotchas, there are no trap doors. Occasionally you may take a step backward because you implement a new system or new process or something like that. But ultimately, you should always be driving up and around and towards that area at the top where your institution is gaining that sustainable competitive advantage in the marketplace. And so that's that's our that's our pathway. That's how we define that. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide, Carl, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, as, as Liz mentioned, there is obviously there, there is we've seen the last several years as this great resignation has taken place and, and all the changes that are happening in the labor market. There has been an exodus in talent away from higher education towards the private sector. Uh, in, in our large urban areas, if you happen to be an institution that's based there, you've got a lot of competition around there. You have a, you have a deep pool of talent, likely in your area, but you also have a lot of competition trying to draw that talent away into, their, into other areas. If you are a small rural institution, you may have the opposite problem, which is essentially you don't necessarily have a lot of talent on site. Or you don't have a lot of competition trying to draw it away. But it's also, if they do happen to leave, it's awfully difficult to attract and retain that top individual in those areas. Um, so what we've seen in the last couple of years, we've been in business for more than 20 years now. And since the pandemic, really since this great resignation, we've had a lot of partners, uh, current partners and also prospective partners that are approaching us and saying, what can you offer us in other areas? Things like institutional research, financial aid, our registrar function, cybersecurity areas like that we're saying okay we understand it touches all these things you you have a, you have a, a track record of success in these areas can you help us in some of these other areas as well and the answer is yes um, that's been that's been the trend that we've seen but a great deal of success uh, partnering in, in a lot of these areas uh, but ultimately there's just an awful lot of additional support with uh, you know as Liz mentioned it's about not coming in and, and blowing out your entire staff. It's all about working with the team you've got because at the end of the day, most of you have very hardworking teams that are trying to do the best they can. 
But as we've seen over the last decade or so, you know, the, the, the costs of IT have increased, uh, the, the complexity of those IT environments, even if you're a small private, starts to look an awful lot like that large public university down the street, just with a, a, a one or two less zeros on the user base. Uh, at the same time, those expectations of the new students have increased as well. And yet what's happened to budgets? What's happened to your professional development, right? What's happened to your, to your staff? more than likely it has stayed static the entire time. So unfortunately that gap, that delta in between cost complexity to expectation, and then where your investments have been over the years, that gap, that's what needs closing. That's where those issues are lying. It's not about your team necessarily. It's about the resources and the horsepower they have at their disposal to close those gaps and help you meet those needs. And so that's what we've been able to do through our talent cloud, which again is coming alongside your existing teams and augmenting those with the exact uh, the exact support, the exact expertise, the skill and the scale that you need when you need it, and then they're gone when you don't. And so that's what allows us to offer that at a flat monthly fee that can work for, e for even small private institutions who are struggling in these areas. So if you don't mind, go ahead, Carl, one more. You know, the last piece of the puzzle is, uh, and I think this, this was mentioned, you voiced this, was uh, there's some frustration amongst leaders, which is, okay, that's great. You're, you're checking the boxes. You're fixing my Wi-Fi and things like that. But again, I'm not necessarily getting the support that I need, that my cabinet needs, that my board is, is looking for from our IT function in terms of not just doing the technical and the tactical pieces that are down there in that green bar at the bottom, right? That's table stakes. We've got to be able to come in and do that in order to be effective. But if that's all we do, we're not moving the needle for your cabinet, for your leadership, for your legacy for your board. And so the things that are in that blue area up above, that's also, that's our dual track. That's a second area of expertise with functional experts, with uh, strategic experts that can come alongside those teams and use technology as an accelerator and an enabler to make those things happen. Um, so if you just do the blue, you never really address the green. You're never taking care of your staff, your faculty, your students. But if you just hang around there, you're not getting the things done that you need to get done that are keeping you up at night and are the top of, the, of, of your agenda. And so making sure that you can achieve both of those things, taking care of that faculty, staff, students, and at the same time, enabling you to fulfill your vision, your strategic plan, and having that alignment in between the two, that from our perspective is really what managed services is all about from the higher education side. So thanks for the time. Oh, that was uh, great. And uh, you know, a different perspective, but very similar objective to what Liz was talking about. And you're right. I like how you address the uh, current IT functions and in institutions are full of hardworking, committed IT employees, and they are struggling, trying to provide the services and support. Uh, and uh, that doesn't mean to change them out. It means to support them. How can you support them better so they're uh, best utilized? So uh, great, great talk. Okay, audience, I uh, attendees, I'm uh, so sorry for this dense slide. And because of its density, uh, you have another 10 seconds to answer the question. But it's really simple. It, it's just a stronger week for each of these six categories. IT help desk, IT security, network Wi-Fi, academic technology, uh, reporting and data, or technology leadership. And if you could just give us a quick, uh, stronger week for each one of these categories for your institution, uh, be grateful for the input, and it would give us some insight. You know, as we talk about full. Uh, managed outsourcing. Uh, we also have, there is also select outsourcing. So maybe you have some strengths in your institution that you want to retain, but there's other areas that are weaker that could be bolstered. So we'd be interested in uh, letting uh, the rest of the attendees kind of get gain perspective on that. So uh, again, uh, 40, 45 seconds, uh, please answer this question and we'll move on to our next presenter who is Matt Loki from uh, Executive Vice President for Apogee. And uh, Matt has had a long career in strategy and supporting uh, uh, institutions and in education. He's worked with uh, many of them across the entire country and outside of the country. 
Uh, currently, he's responsible for uh, the business development and the services and day-to-day -day management of Apogee. And uh, before that, he was involved in strategy and management and consultation to many companies in technology, engineering, software, and pharmaceuticals. Uh, what's interesting is his work uh, uh, being responsible for uh, Salesforce management and the development across 200 plus campuses in 46 states. Uh, so that was uh, you know, a lot of work at this media firm that he worked at, but really gave him insight uh, to the senior uh, level strategy of institutions, uh, which informs what he does today. Here's the feedback from the last poll question. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, inputs uh, on this question. I know this was a little bit of a tough one compared to the others, but great feedback here. It looks like 79% of folks, uh, both in the IT help desk and tech support and in the network Wi-Fi internet uh, areas is uh, strong. Uh, for IT help desk and tech support, uh, we have some weak uh, areas here, and IT security and cyber uh, prevention is uh, about 58%. And then uh, we have also network and Wi-Fi is weak uh, for, for some. So, you know, that kind of different areas, but I think what this tells us is targets of big general areas that some institutions are struggling with. What's interesting is uh, we don't. We see a lot of the tactical uh, that uh, Pat Patrick was just talking about. I don't so much see the uh, strategic, and that's interesting. I'd like to dive into that a little bit more, or even the reporting, the data, and the intelligence that institutions need to operate every day is very critical. So uh, we'll we'll learn more about that later. But thank you for answering that question, and Matt, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Carl, and you're welcome to go on to the next slide. We definitely don't need to spend any more time talking about me. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you, uh, Carl and uh, the Campus Consortium team uh, for putting this together. And I think from a theme perspective, I, I really like the, the message uh, that's coming to the surface with with Liz and Patrick, and I'm sure Barbara will do a great job of, of tying us all together. Uh, but it really resonates with me. And, and because what they're suggesting is that there is a, um, there's a collective of help and resources that want to and are available and have expertise for uh, the advancement of higher education. And so, you know, at Apogee, we say higher education is our higher purpose. And, and that is I think we're all fortunate, whether you work on a campus and you're contributing to the academic mission or uh, you're Barbara or Liz or Patrick or Dr. Horvath, um, I think everybody takes that personally, right? The, the, this notion that you're contributing to uh, higher education in the United States and beyond, and there's a lot of meaning in that. And further, if you go down uh, and you peel that back a little bit and you think about meaning and purpose, uh, and put that on the IT level, right? People go, well, IT, you know, that sounds hard or, you know, IT doesn't work or our IT is great. You hear, you know, a lot of a lot of sentiments. Really at the core, a campus today, and this is obviously, it, it. this notion expands every day, but a campus now, a modern campus cannot function without high-performing IT operations and service, right? The business and the activity of teaching and learning uh, has to be supported by great IT systems, teams, leaders, and support. And so, you know, higher education, great purpose, right? Uh, the advancement of hearts and minds and research uh, in a, you know, in a great uh, environment. Further, what's supporting that, driving that great teaching and learning, which is held up foundationally by excellence in IT. Uh, so that's a, that's a, uh, I think it's really important to put our finger on that. And, uh, you know, I have children and they, you know, Apogee, our roots are, are in uh, managed Wi-Fi, right? Managed networking. And uh, so I always, I always have to connect <laughs> the, the great purpose of Wi-Fi on a campus 
to the, you know, the larger meaning of life, if you can believe it, uh, we have to have that conversation about what it enables and why it's critical. Uh, but at Apogee, we've been doing it for 22 years and we've got 400 clients. And for those of you that do know us, uh, our, our roots, our operational roots are in managed networking, which is really taking something that um, for years and years, and even sometimes today, uh, complex, challenging, uh, and fraught with potholes uh, and make it common and predictable. And we do that, uh, if you want to go to the next slide, Carl, um, we do that very simple formula for aligning with schools and understanding uh, needs. We call it a four fits, uh, but it's really, it's purpose built for higher ed, but it starts with culture, right? And so cultural fit, we think is the most important dimension uh, in when selecting uh, Manage services. Uh, is this, you know, do we have a good fit personality wise? The goals are all those things uh, really strong uh, because if they're not, then, you know, your, your operational fit, some of the tech uh, fitness could be questioned. And certainly financially, it makes it more stressful. But those are the four dimensions that we really focus on in terms of getting fit uh, with our clients. If you go on to the next slide, Carl. Ultimately, it's driven towards a look of success. And, um, and I think that the other uh, panelists would probably express this in a similar way, but what you're doing is ultimately moving towards uh, competitive differentiation and ultimately a shift. And part of what leaders have to do or can do in higher ed today is try to think beyond how do I survive next year? How do we survive five years, but you're thinking bigger about a 30-year survivability mindset, right? A plan, uh, but it has to, you need a pretty significant shift in the way that things are organized today in order to pull that off. But if, if you think about your legacy impact uh, on the institutions you serve, uh, that's a tall order, <laughs> right? And so even getting through the next budget meeting can be a challenge, but I'll you step back and you think about it in terms of 30 year, not only survivability, but thrivability, um, I think you can find some inspiration and there's some courage that has to come out of it to make big shifts in the way we're organized. It's not just with IT, it can be with academic programming uh, and a lot of other ways that we're organized to deliver uh, teaching and learning. Ultimately, and, and you know, from an Apogee perspective, um, this, this uh, uh hierarchy, if you will, it is self-serving for Apogee because infrastructure and connectivity are foundational, right? And it's supported by uh, you know, a stable, secure environment, which then enables competitive differentiation and ultimately a big shift. So what you're looking to do ultimately is trade operations that are common, challenging, headache-inducing, make them common and predictable, uh, so that you can spend time on things that are value creating, right, and value impacting and value shifting. So you can economize on the foundational levels, right? So engineer more value out of the things that are common, but also capture value by the things that are dynamic, innovative, changing, and show all kinds of possibility uh, for the future. Uh, but from a from an Apogee perspective, we're we're happy to support. Uh, clients in a number of ways, uh, from you know the the you know, the full outsourcing concept uh, down to managing the Wi-Fi in the residence halls, uh, which uh, is always an adventure. <laughs> if you can imagine, uh, even after 22 years of doing it and uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of students on our network, every day it's something new. So. Uh, but that also makes it fun. But thanks again, Carl, and thanks to the other panelists uh, for having me today. Matt, thank you. Great insight. And I, I love this uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs for educational institutions. Uh, this pyramid is so uh, apt, you know, to what we're talking about in terms of the foundational commodity type internet that, or I'm, I'm sorry, commodity type IT services that really support institutions. And if you're worried about your stability, your foundation, 
how can you proceed ahead to advance the institution uh, with the paradigm shifts that you really need to be doing, especially in today's education sector. So great insight. I, I appreciate that input. And uh, one more poll question, audience. Uh, have you been able to hire and retain, speaking of what our panelists have been talking about, have you been able to hire and retain campus qualified IT employees uh, with the skill, expertise, and leadership needed for your institution? And again, yes, somewhat or no. So please take the next few uh, seconds, 30 seconds, and answer this question. Uh, because that is an issue, the great resignation, the pandemic impacts, and the economy, uh, changes in society have all uh, really affected who is available. It's not the 1990s anymore, right? So people are not coming to institutions to work uh, long term uh, for complex jobs when they could be taking a job uh, either creating more income or in other uh, other uh, you know organizations, the they they won't always get what they can get from a nonprofit education institution, uh, which is maybe not measurable in money. But as uh, somebody says, Liz, I don't know, somebody said this uh, earlier. You can't spend that at the uh, store to buy uh, a carton of milk. So uh, moving on to the next presenter. Uh, which is Barbara. Uh, but before I introduce Barbara, results of the last poll somewhat, we have a mix of institutions that uh, uh, employees and entry level employees, and that's what most uh, schools are able to acquire. And it's usually because of the budget. Uh, they can't pay uh, always competitive salaries and benefits. Uh, so a lot of the time, some employees will work in IT, then move on and uh, for, for a different opportunity. And uh, it's difficult for institutions to retain those employees. Uh, some do, you can see 16% are able to do that, uh, but some can't at all, and that's uh, almost 30%. So uh, it's, it's a difficult uh, time uh, in com compared to the past in the history of education IT to staff your own IT department and this is where managed services can really help remove those headaches. Uh, and uh, you can apply the part of IT managed services where it's most needed in your organization. So thank you, uh, attendees, for answering that question. I'd like to introduce Barbara Rodriguez. Barbara is a member of the senior leadership team at Oculus IT, and she works closely with colleges and universities to ensure they gain the full value of IT managed services. She serves only higher education institutions and ensures the technology aligns with university mission and objectives. She's also worked for education-specific software companies in the institutional advancement application area and student information system uh, companies. So a uh, lot of uh, education experience there. Barbara, thank you for joining us and looking forward to your uh, presentation. Barbara, please take it away. Yes, thank you so much providing or for providing us with this forum to discuss today's higher education needs, Carl. I really appreciate the introduction. Um, before we jump into things, I just want to give a quick highlight of Oculus IT for those who may not be familiar with the company. We are proud to serve higher education as a leading managed security services provider. We've got offices in the US, Canada, India, and we support more than 250 institutions with our services. We aim to revolutionize the security landscape in educational institutions and offer comprehensive security solutions that are tailored specifically to your institution's unique needs and challenges. We have a global approach that's flexible and scalable and highly cost effective to ensure we are driving a return on your IT investments. Um, in today's digital age, protecting sensitive data, maintaining compliance, safeguarding your intellectual property at your institution is always going to be of utmost importance. Um, we understand that we have a duty to higher ed to make these services accessible, customizable, and most importantly, affordable. Um, we have hundreds of customers across higher ed that praise this approach and truly appreciate you know, how we support them in their institutional outcomes in creative ways that aren't breaking the budget. And I think that all of us in this panel are really passionate about creating effective pathways forward for institutions of all sizes to ensure IT success. 
Uh, let's go ahead and hit the next slide, please. So our IT capabilities are set out to empower higher ed through services spanning IT leadership, cybersecurity compliance, infrastructure, enterprise applications, and more. And as you can see here, our comprehensive services can be tailored to help bridge that gap with on-prem teams to ease their burden of day-to-day -day workloads, manage their ERP applications through maintenance, monitoring, those constant system updates, as well as provide around-the-clock network and security services to ensure the highest level of protection against threat actors. And I know Liz mentioned it earlier, you know, when you've got all of these different roles, it's really difficult to find that right level of talent to fit each one of those positions. Um, you know, one of the things that we know and understand is that higher ed, you guys are making significant investments in technology to transform your campus with the primary focuses on improving agility, enhancing that student experience and making sure you can capture the full potential of your faculty. But you know, as we're having conversations with higher ed leaders across the country, we constantly hear that these digital transformation initiatives are stalled because of lean in-house teams. They're being consumed by the demands and complexities of just the ongoing daily operations. And I personally truly appreciate that as an industry, we're moving beyond the traditional stigmas of outsourcing and realizing that outsourcing, it's, it's not this negative four letter word that sometimes it's held in the past. You know, at Oculus IT, we've got comprehensive and remote IT outsourcing services that aim to help you save the cost of managing internal resources. These comprehensive IT outsourcing services help save money, actually empower you to retain your existing talent, sometimes pay them more, optimize your IT spending and improve the overall application infrastructure and security capabilities. We also have the remote IT outsourcing services that Carla mentioned about staff augmentation, you know, giving those extra hands when and where you need it most so your primary team can focus on those priority projects while the remote team can just continue to cater to your evolving needs that come up. We also find that colleges and universities are wanting to maximize on their ERP investment with the support of MSPs. You know, we have professional managed services and functional service for, for the industry's leading RPs. You know, you've got a Lucian Spanner, a colleague, and more. And we've got teams of professionals that can help you get the most out of your systems while reducing your IT spend. Uh, let's flip to the next slide, please, Carl. You know, at Oculus IT, our main goal is to continue to inspire higher education to challenge the status quo when it comes to the legacy approach to IT, you know, we are working in a time where budgets are getting smaller. You can't fill those vacant roles for on, you know, on campus positions because of private sector. Um, there's a higher turnover rate. Sometimes the needed skill sets are just simply not available. And our core, our core and foundational services are centered completely around our clients. All right, one more slide for please. You know, we understand the value of IT being a strategic asset to your institution and the complexities and costs of maintaining and evolving these IT solutions. You know, at the highest level, higher ed IT requires support in one form of another that puts the CIO, your IT department, and the entire institution in a position to be successful and achieve those institutional goals. I know that Liz and Carl both said it earlier, and it begs to be repeated. IT is not just a utility and we have to have it be transformed. You know, ITA practitioners, they're moving away from legacy technologies. We need to be moving away from those legacy, legacy IT services and look at things in new and fresh ways. You know, to be effective in IT in any industry is a 24 seven initiative and you have to have the support, support and services available around the clock. Um, they have to find ways to handle both daily workloads as think creatively and innovatively to be as responsible or responsive to these you know, needs of faculty, students, staff, and these exponentially changing needs. And if those needs or requirements are the result of an upheaving, unplanned upheaval, such as a global pandemic, you simply don't have the resources you know, in-house. You have to expand and work with partners. Um, you know, there's a lot of questions that come up with how, how higher ed IT can respond to the economic changes and challenges. 
Um, some of the ones that we hear most often are, you know, how do we achieve success and effectiveness with all of these financial constraints? How are we redefining our organization with recruiting and retention problems and those wanting to work from home versus being in the office and on campus and in these buildings? How does higher ed leaders ensure risks are managed 24 seven? You know, how can we sleep at night knowing that there is these heightened threats due to AI technology like chat, BG, or chat GPT and BARD? So, you know, how do we continually monitor and transform these services 24 seven? So we've got this experience of exponential change happening and we've got to move things in a new direction to really ensure that we're achieving institutional and student goals. You know, since IT is now viewed as a strategic partner at institutions, it's our responsibility to help drive those outcomes and make sure that we are meeting the expectations from executives and the board. And I love what Matt said earlier, this isn't about survivability, it's about thriveability. And I think all of us here are, all of us are here to help higher ed thrive and evolve in new and transformative ways. I mean, you know, one thing with Oculus IT, we've got this global approach and we are confidently going in the right direction to help institutions partner and develop a roadmap for institutional and student success. Uh, let's go ahead and jump one more slide forward, please. So there's countless benefits to partnering with managed security services like Oculus IT. You know, we've got IT departments that need support for their CIOs and have to have creative ways to retain and develop their local teams. In addition to supporting IT leadership and solutions, we're solving problems with the human factors. You know, colleges and universities need more than part or need these partners that can support them, not replace them. We've got judicious investments in IT is challenging and it's compounded by the resources being scarce from difficulty to hire, manage and retain and train. You know, they need these solutions to solve these problems, um, but the return on these investments have to be able to be managed fiscally. You know, the bottom line is that higher ed IT, they need support and managed services partners are going to be the key ingredient and critical to the solution. Transformation of, of IT in higher ed requires some degree of these partnerships to be realized. You know, all of us here today, we're here to help bridge the gap between keeping the lights on to creating these transformational and improved services to students, faculty, and staff. Uh, what I truly believe differenti differentiates Oculus IT, we've got this global nature, so providing around the clock support, and we really work backwards based on an institution's unique needs, providing more than just a traditional out of the box solution. Um, and, you know, for anybody that's looking for more information about Oculus IT, we're happy to connect after today's webinar event. Uh, back to you, Carl. Thank you so much, Barbara. Much appreciated. And uh, I, I love how you tied in uh, from all our other speakers right into uh, really clarifying those points and then making new points from those. Uh, you're, you're right. It is uh, something that is moving aggressively ahead for institutions and any institution that is uh, concerned about moving ahead or thinking they can't move ahead with this uh, because of expense or complexity, uh, they don't. Uh, they 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 should meet with Campus Consortium or any of you uh, managed services providers, vendors, just to gain perspective on that for their institution. And if not to do something now, perhaps make a strategic plan for the future. So I, I really want to thank everyone. We're just about at the top of the hour. Thank you for this distinguished panel of speakers today. You guys were great. Amazing. I, I love the discussion. It was collegial thought leadership from every one of you. And that's what these webinars are about. And attendees, thank you for coming out and sticking with us. Uh, so many of you stayed through this uh, presentation. So many of you came when I'm sure you're on vacation because it's June and you had a tough uh, two semesters. Uh, but but thank you for joining in and uh, uh, you know listening to our, our our speakers and for contributing to the uh, poll questions. I'm just going to throw one more out there for whoever's still here. Uh, does IT leadership have cabinet? Uh, representation? Did it, does it uh, on the cabinet, but it reports to somebody else or no, it doesn't have either. It just reports to another VP. 
Uh, if you could just quickly answer that before we uh, close out the webinar, I'd appreciate that. And this will all be in a EdTech report for all our attendees today. We will make sure that you get this presentation and the report that is generated after this. We also invite our attendees uh, or uh, members or not members of Campus Consortium to join our Campus Consortium think tank uh, where we talk about issues like this. It's a community discussion. Uh, we, it's lively and interesting. And uh, some interesting projects come out of that uh, as we all talk about unique challenges for the institutions and how to uh, work together to share uh, information and solve common problems. And so here's our results. Uh, IT leadership looks like it's about 29, 30, uh, 38 percent or somewhat and 33 percent or no. So interesting. That's good. And uh, as we heard from our panelists today, uh, we certainly want to uh, make sure that the leadership and in institutions embrace and use the strategic value of technology. I want to thank everyone again for attending today, and we will see you next time and have a great rest of the day.